What is going on everybody? It is Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade heading into the third week of June in 2019, as well as talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that you guys, the viewers, the subscribers ended up calling out either in the comment section from Friday's video or from the Discord group chat in the call out section. So if you did end up calling out a stock, I really do appreciate you guys for doing so and I will get to those in this video as well as just giving a gist a synopsis of what ended up happening in the markets this past week taking a look at the S&P 500 as well as talking about some things to keep an eye on my thoughts this upcoming week and over the next couple of weeks for the market here so without further ado guys wait wait wait, wait. before we do get into it for all you guys that enjoy the videos, enjoy the content, just go down below and hit that like button for me. It really does support the channel and supports me in general. And now we can get right into the video, guys. So the S&P 500 last week, it was a really a consolidation week. That's what I pretty much call this past week. We've seen the S&P and the markets in general, they've been on an absolute tear over the past two weeks. And they finally ended up cooling off last week after we saw a double top on Monday heading into Tuesday on the S&P 500 at a resistance at 2915 which was a resistance a couple of months ago and a very strong resistance at that and from there again we got that double top right around here and then we started to trend down all the way to 2875 where it seems like we held a strong support and from there we've really just been trading from 2875 upwards of about $2,900 on the S&P for the remaining of the week, those last three days of, I guess you can say the last four, three and a half days of last week's trading session. So again, markets, they were going crazy. They needed a period to cool off. I think this is it. And now we need to see what direction is the market going to pick? Are we going to bounce from here to the upside, break 2915, and then maybe <clears throat> retest those all-time highs? Or are we going to dump from here sell off, maybe retest that 180 SMA, the 50 SMA, you know, these support levels at 2850, 2800, you know, 2740. These are some levels that could be heading up for the S&P if we do end up breaking down here. So that's kind of what happened last week, consolidation, and you guys can see it across all of the major indexes that we track on this channel, the NASDAQ and the Dow included. You guys can see it was a cool off week. So this upcoming Coming week, guys, we're actually trying to revive trade negotiations uh, with China. The U.S. is going into a meeting, and I do have um, the article on my phone here so I can give you guys what is going on. On Monday, the office of the U.S. Trade Representative is due to open seven days of hearings on the new tariffs to solicit public comment ending June 25th. That is to be followed by a one-week period for submission of written comments, after which President Trump could direct the office to impose new tariffs. So these next two weeks, there's going to be more negotiations um, between Trump and China and their um, offices and all of that great stuff. So if, if they have to impose new tariffs, guys, you know, these are the specific products that are going to have tariffs on them. $37 billion on laptops, uh, $43 billion in mobile phones. If I scroll down here to the bottom of the article, I believe it says 14.1 billion on footwear, a total of 26.7 billion on toys, 2.3 billion on books. So if you add all this up, you know, this is going to be another about 100, 150 billion on tariffs. And I'm sure there are more um, products that are going to be um, hit with new tariffs other than the ones that I just mentioned. So this is very important, guys. Let's say that the tariffs they continue to escalate, more products start to get hit with new tariffs. This can have a negative weight on the economy and the stock market. And I'm really excited to see, you know, how is the market going to react to this? I think if we see things heating up, let's say things start to get uh, more tense, even more tense than they are right now between China and the U.S. They keep going back and forth. They don't come to an agreement. Things look like maybe they're getting even worse. You know, this can dump the market 
markets heavily in my personal opinion and we've seen it happen in the past we've seen this crash not really a crash but a really big sell-off due to mostly tariffs here and we saw another one a couple of weeks ago in the beginning of May all the way throughout the month of May being because of tariffs so this can very well dump again guys I'm preparing myself for that so now that we got kind of some news out of the way my personal opinion on the markets right now I think they're going to fall if the, these tariffs weigh on them more negatively in the next couple of weeks and we broke down you know what ended up happening last week let's just get right into it guys you know this upcoming week there are a few stocks that I'm personally watching in particular some of these semiconductor stocks including AMD and for those of you guys that don't know this past week uh Friday uh, semiconductor stock <clears throat> stocks got hit pretty hard. Broadcom reported bad guidance and a bad earnings report due to some fears regarding the tariffs and the trade situation with China. And that kind of sent a shock wave and a fear across the markets and obviously hit some of these semiconductor stocks. If you guys see, you know, let's take a look at some of them. You guys can see this one was down about 1%. You guys can see, let's see Qualcomm, what, what, what did that one end up going down about? 2% here. You know, AMD got hit pretty hard, which is actually one that I'm watching here. It was down about 3.28%. Uh, <clears throat> Apple kind of got hit from this down about $1.41. So AMD is actually one um, that I'm personally watching here for a potential bounce back in the semiconductor stocks. And who knows, guys, this news can very well drag them down over the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. But if AMD does end up holding this $30 level of support, which was a resistance, we maintain this. If we maintain this and we slowly start to confirm a bounce to the upside here, this can be an awesome swing trade. Uh, you know, a couple of days of day trading it, that could also be very awesome. You know, if we start to test back up to that all time high at about $34.30, coupled with a very nice low RSI here, getting close to that 30 threshold, which means it's very, very oversold. You know, that's pretty attractive right now in terms of. AMD. But the thing that I'm worried about here is, again, if this Broadcom news, earnings, guidance, if this continues to drag down semiconductors, this can definitely be hit even further. And if it does break $30, guys, honestly, I'm not looking to play it. But again, if we hold that level, I think that's a very technical, uh, technically important spot. We bounce on it. I'm going to be playing AMD. So MCD is another one that we talked about in last week's uh, videos, and this is one that's been doing very well as the markets have been weak and selling off. Notice how whole month of May markets dropped, what was it, like 5, 6, 7%? If we're looking at the three major ones we talk on this cha uh, talk about on this channel, right? You guys can see what did McDonald's do on, on the 1st of May? It was $194 per share all the way to till about three weeks in May 22nd it was two hundred dollars and forty eight cents and then we started to dip a bit uh, because the, uh, the the dividend was paid there you guys can see and if you don't know typically when a stock does pay dividends the X uh, not the X dividend date the payout date um, typically drops a bit uh, uh, the price of the stock when it does pay the dividends that's just kind of how it works guys look deeper into that if you want to learn more about that it's pretty interesting but we can see even though it dipped a bit, it still ended up closing above uh, where it started off the month when the markets in general were down 5, 6, 7 percent. McDonald's ended up going up. And you guys can see as markets continue to get um, more, uh, not really the markets going um, down because the markets were rallying, but McDonald's just kept going up as well as, you know, tensions in the markets are still obviously here. We know there's a lot of tensions right now, trade war, you know, tariffs, economy slow slowing down, you know, jobs are much less um, in terms of uh, uh, jobs open in May, 75,000 versus 180,000, you know, retail data slowing down, you know, we're getting a bunch of negative stuff right now in McDonald's, negative news, and McDonald's continues to run up. So this one, you know, it, it does strong guys in terms of a, a, a negative environment uh, that we're currently in. And it's just always one that I'm watching here on a technical basis right now. I talked about it in the previous videos, but I would love to see a 
pullback on McDonald's and either a retest at about 201 on that 50 SMA or even better, guys, a retest at, let's say, $198, $199. That would put us at an old resistance at about 198 which would be a new support, obviously, and it would put us on top of that 180 SMA. I think that would be a very good entry at about 3% lower from where we currently are right now. And at that point, guys, I'd be heavily considering swing trading McDonald's, to be honest with you all. I love this one, again, during a market that is kind of shaky, right? So that is another stock that I'm watching, AMD and MCD. Those are my two favorite in terms of stocks heading into this week. And a more speculative play, a really speculative play at this point, is Beyond Meat, ticker symbol BYND. And this is a stock, guys, that... A lot of people have been paying attention to since its IPO. And for those of you guys that don't know, they make like a vegan burger, vegan sausages, uh, turkey burgers. And I actually tried them before in the past, a couple of months ago. I think I tried them. Yeah, I did try them before they went public. And I really did enjoy it. But the thing is, guys... They're very, very, very expensive. I paid like $8, no joke, guys, $8, and I got two turkey burgers, literally two patties, and they're very, very, very high in fat, like literally very high in fat. I couldn't even b believe my eyes. It was like 35, I think it was like 35 grams of fat for one burger, which is pretty, pretty high, but I guess that's how they, you know, substitute it for not having meat. I'm not too sure how it goes, but anyway, the stock opened up at $45, and you guys can see it went up all the way to 186 This is unbelievable. That's a move of how many doubles is that? That's like a 4X right there. So that's pretty crazy. Now we're seeing a little bit of a pullback, profit taking, whatever that may be, from 186 down to about 123 And notice how we maintain the 50 simple moving average, and we've been kind of maintaining the uptrend. Honestly, guys, you guys can see we pulled down to 123 at a higher low from the previous. We popped up to about 147 Although it was a lower high, it was also a higher low from the previous at about 138 and now we're confirming that bounce so at this point you know I would love to see are we going to pull down a bit maybe and retest this trend line at about 148 and then pop up again from there that is what I'm personally looking to see here but one thing I'm a bit worried about and what I want to see and why I want to see more direction is we could be heading and we kind of are already in this wedge that you guys can see so if we break out this is going to be a signal to go uh, long in the short term, in my personal opinion, on uh, BYND, Beyond Meat. But let's say we get rejected, and especially if we break the support of this trend line, and especially if we break that 50 SMA, that's going to be a um, pretty bad bearish sign. You know, we could be heading down even lower if we break those technical spots. So Beyond Meat, I'm liking it, guys. I'm liking it, but be careful. This is a stock with a lot of hype. It's very overvalued right now, but it does offer some big opportunities if you're day trading, if you're hopping in and out of the swings here. It's a lot of opportunity, but it is a lot risky than AMD and McDonald's, in my personal opinion, because it just IPO'd, doesn't have a track history. It's obviously going haywire. It's 4 x in a couple of weeks. That is something to just... Be mindful of and be cautious and don't put any money in this that you're not willing to 100% lose, guys. That is very important, playing with these volatile stocks and especially in penny stocks and leveraged GTFs, but that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. So beyond me, I'm liking that one heading into this week. Another... Uh, ETF now let's go to some ETFs that I'm personally watching I'm liking gold right now guys gold futures and JNUG and JDST this is very interesting in my eyes right now because we saw gold peaked up to 1362 it broke out of that 1350 level of resistance and now it seems like we're pulling back and we're trending above the 50 simple moving average here on the 180 uh 180 day four hour chart so I'm interested in seeing what are we going to do at this point in time? Are we going to hold that 50 SMA at that point? If we get down a bit, maybe another eight points lower, the RSI is going to drop. And at that point, you know, we could be getting in on a nice entry point on JNUG on the dip because JNUG is going up whenever gold is going up. So you guys can see it sold off. 
right? Sold off. If we bounce on that 50 SMA, right, that'll give us about a 10% margin of profit back up to that resistance. I'm liking that. And especially with the bullish technicals that we've been getting from gold lately, guys, they're very attractive. Gold is something that people view as a safe haven when the markets are rocky. Do I specifically think it's a safe haven? I'm not 100% going to say that from my personal opinion, but the general uh, consensus that is that it is a safe haven. And that's why, in my opinion, the markets uh, ha have been pricing up gold because the markets right now in general are very rocky. And a lot of people think we're at the end of the economic cycle, which no one can really deny that. And people are expecting a crash and no one knows when it's going to come. It's definitely going to come, but it can be in the next two months. We can already be in a recession. It can happen in a year, two years. No one really knows guys, but the fact that it's spiking up now, you know, that is giving me some inclination to trade JNUG. So, so I'm watching it, guys. I'm really watching it. I'm liking the dip, and I'm liking the opportunity that gold has in the next coming weeks. So gold, crude oil is another one that I'm watching here, especially UWT and DWT, the two inverse ETFs that trade based on crude oil. And notice how crude oil right now, it's at a resistance under the one, uh, or rather the 50 SMA on the 184-hour chart. So a couple of different things can happen here, guys. If we break out of this resistance, you know, UWT, which goes up whenever crude oil is going up, is going to be a breakout potential play. And notice how this may be the bottom here. Not saying it is, guys. We're seeing a strong support at about 1065, but we are still getting rejected by that 50 SMA. And for us to realize and, and really believe it's the bottom, we need to see a breakout like that and a truck and a head up to that 50 SM or the 180 SMA and a potential move up there because as of now again we're still down trending we're still getting rejected we need to see that technical break but let's say you know we do get a rejection here let's say we don't break out let's say we get rejected and we push to a lower low pretty much just continuing this downwards trending pattern that we've been on DWT, which goes up whenever crude oil is selling off, this one's going to be very nice and it's going to be a continuation play here on the uptrend that it's been on. So those are my top two uh, uh, ETF combos that I'm watching. I'm really liking the movement on gold for a potential JNUG play, and I'm really liking crude oil right now. Both of the plays there, UWT and DWT, those are looking juicy. We just need to see what direction is crude oil going to pick? So those are some inverse ETF plays. You guys know that I'm always watching these market ETFs. Always, always, always. These are my go-to when the markets are volatile, when the markets are selling off, and especially, guys, when we're anticipating a direction for the market to pick like we are currently waiting on right now. So let's say the markets dump from where they are. Let's say the markets sell off because they've been hot. They're consolidating. Let's say we don't continue the bullish run. Let's say we finally cool off even more. We start to dump. Let's say the tariff news or the tariff um, negotiations, they go sour again. That's a negative catalyst. Let's say we dump. You know, SQQQ and SPXS, those are two ETFs that I'm going to be watching very closely. The SPXS is going up whenever the S&P 500 is selling off. And since the NASDAQ actually has gone up over the past couple of trading days during this run-up more than the S&P and the Dow in terms of a percentage basis, I'm liking SQQQ even more because this one trades on the NASDAQ and it has an even bigger margin of profit due to the NASDAQ going up the most. And if you guys are confused by that, the SQQQ ETF, it's a 3x leveraged ETF that trades on the NASDAQ. And since the NASDAQ has gone up so much since over the past week, let's say it's gone up like 5%, that means the SQQQ ETF has pulled back the most compared to the SPXS ETF, if that, if that makes any sense, right? Because if the NASDAQ went up 5%, this one 
went down 15% roughly as opposed to the S&P, which went up, let's say, 3%. That caused the SPXS to go down only 9%, right? So there's a bit more margin on SQQQ right now. And you guys can see it's plateauing. We need to see a uh, pop-up here for me to even consider trading this one. And I do love it, guys. I do love um, it, the way it's setting up right now, but we just need to see the sell-off on the NQ. Let's say tech continues to sell off. You know, this has 20, 25% margin of profit, which I personally love. So let's take a look at some tech stocks very quickly so we can see, you know, how these ones are potentially looking. You see Apple here, we sold off about 0.75%. We're holding that 180 SMA, but if we break that guys that's just going to be the continuation of the downtrend in my personal opinion there's a lot of resistances where we are right now 195 200 dollars this uh you know if we break below the 180 sma the 180 sma is going to be a resistance so be mindful of that you know these have been running they are due for a pullback in my opinion amazon amazon Really didn't do anything this past Friday. Pretty much just chilling right now on top of that 180 SMA. Same exact thing as Apple, right? This could be dumping anytime soon. If we break that 180 SMA support, we could be dumping. Facebook has actually been doing quite well here over the past couple of days compared to some of these other stocks. It hasn't really been plateauing, but it's just been running, running, running. This past Friday, it was up 2.18%, up $3.86, nearly $4.00 per share. We're right under that 180 SMA. This is an interesting play right now, guys. This could be a put option play, a potential short if we do end up getting rejected where we are right now. So those are some of the main tech stocks I follow. Obviously, Google they're all still technically downtrending based off actually MSFT is not downtrending right now this is like the only one that's still uptrending based on the ones that are right here on my uh, watch list and it's interesting how Netflix continues to get weak as Disney is going up, as this streaming service is inching up here over the next couple of months, I'm interesting to see, you know, is this going to continue to happen? Is Netflix going to, going to continue to fall? This is something interesting. So those are, I know the list wasn't really a lot today, guys, but that's really it. The ones that I'm personally watching, a lot of the same, you know, a lot of the market ETFs, inverse ETFs, you know, McDonald's, I'm liking that one as a safe haven, you know, AMD, potential bounce back play there if semiconductors do recover. And what was the other one? Beyond me, that is a pretty speculative play, but it does offer a lot of margin of profit. And of course, I'm watching these tech stocks, these volatility ETFs, you know, banking stocks. I'm interested in seeing what ends up happening these coming weeks, especially with the tariff negotiations that are revamping these next two weeks. So if you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and it really supports the channel in general. And I do appreciate all you guys for doing that. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content from me and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. And oh wait, happy five Father's Day, by the way. I forgot to even mention that. If you're a father, you're watching this, happy Father's Day. It means a lot to be a father to somebody, bringing them up in the world. You're doing a great job. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. Have a good one. Happy Father's Day again. See ya.